Hi friends, welcome back to my training series. I hope you're well and hanging in there. Hey, for those of you who are new to this series, I had had several requests from people over the years for me to document my training and show people how I train for big runs. So I started this series at the beginning of the year to show how I'm training to get ready for Cocodona as well as some other things this year. So welcome aboard. I hope you enjoy watching how I train. All right, let's get into it. As usual, Monday was a rest day for me. So I didn't do very much, it felt kind of nice. Tuesday was an easy run with some little speed play, fart licks. So running easy with a couple little speed bursts here and there. The run felt really good. And then when I got home from my run, I did my core strength workout. This is still pretty challenging for me, but I feel so much more confident than when I started just over a month ago. It's exciting to be able to feel such progress. And then after work, I did my yoga session via Zoom. On Wednesday, I was assigned an easy run of 45 to 60 minutes I chose an easy flat loop that runs next to the river and around a water treatment plant near my house. There are a lot of birds in this route too, including a lot of eagles. I slipped and fell. Ouch. Slick road shoes are slippery in the mud. Ah, darn it, ouch. The run only took me about 40 minutes, so it was short, but it felt good. Thursday was LT intervals and strength day. The assignment for the intervals was six times six minutes hard followed by three minutes easy between. I know my fitness is increasing, but man, I can't run straight for six minutes hard. I, I had to stop a few times along the way. The intervals are really hard work. In the afternoon after work, I did my core strength routine. And then Friday, I was assigned a very easy run. And since I was short on time due to an early appointment, I hopped on the treadmill for about 40 minutes. For my Saturday long run, I was assigned between three and three and a half hours. My buddy Tony wanted to run between six and eight miles, so I took him on a fun seven and a half mile loop. And then after he was done running, I did the same loop a second time. It was a beautiful morning of running. Once I got warmed up, I felt really good. Finally on Sunday, I was assigned an hour and a half and I enjoyed a beautiful run on my local trails. I'm so lucky to have access to such beautiful trails nearby. So this week ended up with about 14 miles more than last week's recovery week. And I'm generally feeling pretty good. So next week I'm gonna be traveling with a friend to a place I've never been. So I'll, I'll bring the camera along and I'll share the adventure with you. Okay, let's get to some of the questions. Thanks to everybody who, for dropping questions down in the comments below. B. Hay asks me about using the rower indoors and asking if I do any other cardio besides running. To be honest, I really don't. I don't enjoy cycling very much and I do the rower usually just as a warm up and a cool down from my strength exercises. In times when I'm injured, I will use the rower a lot more and will also use the bike. But for the most part, running is the thing I like to do the most. All right, next question. Jen asks how I fuel for my runs. I'll carry with me things like maple syrup or dates. Uh, I also like Rice Krispie treats. I used to use spring energy as well as a, a cliff gel, but my body started to refuse to enjoy those things. And after eating those, I started to vomit almost immediately. So I've been kind of feeling my body out and seeing what works. And right now, maple syrup and uh, Rice Krispie treats and dates are suiting my stomach just fine. So a lot of times that's what I'll be eating during my run. And what I try to do is to take those calories in every 45 minutes. So I'll set a timer that repeats to remind myself to eat. And in addition to that, I also get calories from my chest bottles. I like to put in gnarly or uh, there's a product called Maple Aid that I really like. Uh, I also have sometimes used uh, some carbohydrates that I put into my water from a company called Infinite Nutrition. So 
you know, usually with those things, I get about 100 calories per bottle, and I'll try to drink one bottle per hour. So between the calories in the bottle and the, uh, the maple syrup or the dates or the Rice Krispie treats or maybe some other snack that I can tolerate, I, I'm usually able to maintain enough calories through the run. And then I also make sure I'm getting my electrolytes in as well. Um, I don't know what my average blood sugar looks like, but I think that's an interesting question. And, and then, so I'm going to go and you know get myself a home test. I'm just curious to see what that might look like. So thank you for the motivation on that. And in terms of the weakness that I reported in the recent week, um, I will try to keep an eye on that. So in case I can figure out what the commonality is, I have a feeling that it has something to do with humidity because I have, remember in previous runs that it has something to do with that. I don't know why the humidity triggers it, but I'll keep an eye on it. In terms of my top three bucket list races, there's a lot of races that I'd like to do and it's tough for me to choose three, but I think the three I'm gonna choose for you is the, the Canadian death race up in Canada. I actually made the t-shirts for that race back in 2010, right? I should say I designed the artwork for those t-shirts with a friend who was volunteering for the race. Back then I wasn't even a runner. I had no idea what ultra running was. And so uh, once I got into ultra running, I remembered, hey, there was that race I made shirts for once. So I looked into it and uh, I'm really excited that I'm actually gonna be running it this August. So the Canadian death race has been on my list for a long time. And I'm looking forward to checking that off in August. And I think another race I'd like to do that actually terrifies me is Tour de Jean. And uh, some friends have done it and they said that it's the hardest thing they've done. And so I would like to try to get that done in the next couple of years. And then uh, another race that has me fascinated that I have on my list that I think I'd like to try sometime is Vol State, uh, one of the Laz races down in the south on the roads. Uh, it seems fascinating to me. I'd like to, I think I'd like to try that challenge and see what's going on there. There are so many races to do and there's and not enough time, certainly not enough money to get to them all, um, but we'll see what we can do. All right, last question about how I got into running. You know, this is a huge topic and I have been asked this before and I think it does deserve its own episode. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and be thinking about how I can put together a script and put together a video for you. Uh, it will be a, a, its own standalone video. So do be on the lookout in the next few weeks for an extra special bonus episode in the series where I talk about what got me here. It might be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the questions. If you have questions that I can answer in the next video, please put them in the comments below, and I'll take a look at them for next week's video. Okay, so that's all for this week. Thank you all to my channel members for the extra support that you give to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who subscribes and presses that like button. I think it helps the channel a lot. So thank you everyone for helping support what we're doing here. And so that's all for now. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a great week. See you next week.